When an animal becomes frozen in ice, its body can last for thousands of years, giving us an incredible view of what the world was like when the animal was alive. Prehistoric mammoths, woolly rhinos, and even humans have been discovered, and are almost perfectly preserved, encased in their tomb of ice. But sometimes, more mysterious things are uncovered that seem to challenge parts of our understanding of biology. Whatever creature is found preserved in the ice, they all provide us with new and valuable information about the life around us and its history. Here are five strange creatures that have been found frozen in ice. The first mysterious creature we will be taking a look at has some very interesting history behind it, and is not actually an ancient animal, but one that is potentially still around today. The Minnesota Iceman is the apparent frozen body of a large human-like ape, similar in appearance to Bigfoot. It has been called the missing link between modern day humans and Neanderthals, and during the 60s and 70s it went on an extensive tour around much of North America, being displayed in carnivals and other locations. The person who the Iceman belonged to during this tour was an exhibitor named Frank Hansen, although he claimed he was only looking after the creature for its real owner, who remains unknown, although it was rumoured to have been the actor James Stewart. As you can imagine, the Minnesota Iceman interested quite a few people, in particular two cryptozoologists called Bernard Hoovelmans and Ivan Sanderson. Bernard Hoovelmans is widely regarded as the father of cryptozoology, the study of unknown and mysterious animals. So, becoming highly interested in the possible existence of this mysterious, large human-like ape, he and Sanderson travelled to Frank Hansen's home in 1968, where the Iceman was being kept while not on tour, and they were able to examine it. They apparently both became completely convinced that this was indeed a real dead body of a previously unknown missing link between humans and Neanderthals that was still alive somewhere in the world. And in 1969, Hoovelmans published a scientific paper describing the Iceman. He even gave the creature a scientific name, Homo pongoides, which means ape-like man. The body, as described by the cryptozoologist, seemed to be that of a burly male which possessed large hands and feet, as well as a thick, muscled neck. The Iceman is also covered in fairly long, dark brown hair. It apparently shows signs of injuries as well, with a bent forearm that looks as if its bones were broken, and one of its eyes dangling loose from its socket. The eye was allegedly like this due to the creature having been shot in the back of the head, which is supposedly how it was killed. This brings us to how exactly the specimen was collected, and where it came from. Frank Hansen, the exhibitor, offered multiple stories of where the body originated from. He once claimed that it was collected along the Siberian coast, where it was floating in a block of ice, but also said that a Japanese whaling vessel had recovered it, and another time declared it was found in storage somewhere in Hong Kong. These multiple tales don't exactly make the authenticity of the Iceman look particularly convincing, but the origin story that soon became the most popular one was the claim that the Iceman came from Vietnam. Bernard Hoovelmans, in his 1969 description of the body, suggested that it had been shot during the Vietnam War and was then flown over to the US in a body bag. However, nowadays the Minnesota Iceman is widely considered to have been a hoax. Certainly a fairly good hoax, since it managed to fool two cryptozoologists into thinking that it had been a living animal, but a hoax nonetheless. A primatologist called John Napier went to examine the Iceman several years after Hoovermans and Sanderson had, but concluded that it was a latex model and not at all a real animal. Frank Hansen offered an explanation for this, claiming that he had replaced the original body with a model in case he got into trouble for having killed what was potentially a very close relative of humans. This claim does not exactly help the validity of the Iceman, and many people have concluded that it has always just been a latex model. You can actually see from pictures of the body that the positions of certain parts of it have moved over the years, which perhaps suggests that there was more than one model. The alleged original model was actually bought in 2013 by the owner of the Museum of the Weird, a museum in Austin, Texas, and so the Minnesota Iceman is now on display to the public. This mysterious frozen creature certainly has an interesting story behind it, despite it turning out to most likely be a fake. But what do you think about this mysterious tale? Let me know in the comments your thoughts on the Minnesota Iceman. This next creature is less mysterious than the Iceman, but no less remarkable. Sasha is the name given to the mummified remains of a baby woolly rhino that was found preserved in the permafrost of Siberia in 2015 by a businessman named Alexander Sasha Bandarov. Nicknamed after its discoverer, the scientists who have studied the body are unsure whether Sasha was male or female. Sasha is about a metre and a half long and just under a metre tall. 
The calf has been estimated to have been about one and a half years old when it died. However, Sasha's remains are now much, much older than this. The rhino died about 34,000 years ago, during an interglacial period when conditions were much warmer in Siberia than they are today. What makes Sasha so special, however, is how fantastically well preserved the infant is. The specimen retains its front and back legs, as well as almost all of its hairy coat, making Sasha the best preserved specimen of a woolly rhino ever found. This creature, therefore, has provided some incredibly valuable information on young woolly rhinos, being the only baby one found so far. The anatomy of the ears, eyes and tongue can all be studied thanks to the remarkable preservation of the skull. The researchers who have been studying the infant can also work out how Sasha actually died. The animal's death seemed quite mysterious to paleontologists, since they thought that the mortality rate of young woolly rhinos would have been very low. This is because finding a skull of a baby rhino is extremely rare, and this suggested to paleontologists that woolly rhinos must have bred very slowly. Because of this slow rate, it would have encouraged mothers to put in a lot of effort to protect their young, and so not many died as infants. So why did Sasha die so young? The autopsy that was performed on the body revealed that the nasal passages were actually filled with mud, so it was likely that poor Sasha had drowned. But Sasha's death all those thousands of years ago has opened up possibilities for scientists today. The animal's DNA can now be sequenced, allowing researchers to compare the genetic code of the extinct woolly rhino with that of its living relatives in an effort to better understand its evolution. We've already looked at the mysterious case of an ice man, but now we're going to examine an ice maiden. The Siberian ice maiden, or Princess of Ukok, as she has also been called, is the mummified body of a woman who lived in the 5th century BC. The woman was, again, discovered in Siberia, frozen in the permafrost for over 2,000 years and incredibly preserved. This woman was first uncovered in 1993, lying in an underground burial chamber. She was a member of a group of people called the Pazariks, who inhabited this region of Siberia from about the 6th to the 2nd century BC. This individual is extremely interesting, and the quality of her preservation has allowed researchers to interpret the incredible story of what may have happened to the princess in her final year. The Ice Maiden was only about 25 years old when she died, and from the way that she was buried, it is clear that she was someone of great importance to the Pazarek people. Found alongside her body were the remains of six horses with saddles, apparently as companions for her journey into the afterlife. There was also meat from sheep and horses, perhaps a meal for her journey, as well as ornaments that surrounded her. Interestingly, there was also a container filled with cannabis present in her burial chamber. These objects paint a picture of someone who obviously had great importance to her people, but it was an MRI scan performed on the body in 2014 that revealed a terrible reality about her death and the final few months of her life. The scan revealed that she had been suffering from an infection of the bone called osteomyelitis since she was a child, but this was not all. She showed signs of injuries that looked like they could have been caused by a fall from a horse, and in addition to this, she was dying from breast cancer. The MRI scan revealed the presence of a tumour in her right breast, and it seems that this was likely what eventually killed the woman. However, from this information, one of the researchers who has studied the body has developed a narrative of what exactly the last few months of the Ice Maiden's life were like. They proposed that during the October of her last year alive, she was migrating with her people to their winter camp, and at this point she was in the final stages of her cancer. Her pain likely led her to use the cannabis that was found alongside her, and in this pain and intoxicated state, she lost much of her strength, causing her to fall from her horse. From the body it can be seen that she must have fallen onto her right side, but this fall is not what killed her, since there are signs that she healed from the injuries. Yet again, her importance to her people is apparent here, since they did not leave her to die, instead bringing her with them to the winter camp. But once she reached the camp, the princess probably did not leave her bed, and would have passed away there. The researchers say that she was likely not actually buried for a couple of months after she died, and looking at the last meals of the horses that accompanied her in the tomb, it seems she was apparently not buried until the middle of June. It's truly incredible that we can tell all of this from the remains of an ancient woman, and that we are able to reconstruct the later life of an individual from 2,500 years ago. It means that even though this person is long dead, they will never be forgotten, all thanks to the ice that preserved her. Luba is another baby animal from the Ice Age that has been preserved in ice for thousands of years. However, she is not a woolly rhino, she's a mammoth. There are actually several other specimens of mummified baby mammoths, but my reason for picking Luba is because I've actually seen her for myself. Back in 2014, she was put on display in the Natural History Museum in London, and I was incredibly lucky to go and see her there. 
Being that close to the body of such an ancient creature was a truly extraordinary experience, especially because this specimen in particular is so well preserved, making it seem like at any moment she could just open her eyes and look right back at me. Luba is, in fact, the best preserved mummified specimen of any mammoth found so far, and the youngest at the time she died. Luba was only 35 days old when she was killed. The cause of her demise was probably similar to Sasha the woolly rhino, since her trunk, mouth, esophagus and trachea are filled up with mud, suggesting that Luba also drowned. The researchers who have been studying her proposed that the baby mammoth was attempting to drink from a river when her feet became trapped in mud on the bank, causing her to fall into the mud before her mother could pull her to safety, where she was choked and eventually suffocated. Despite this awful death, the way in which she died meant that she would become preserved for many thousands of years. Lactic acid producing bacteria from the sediments surrounded her body, causing the corpse to essentially become pickled, and helping to preserve this remarkable creature for 42,000 years. The story of Luba's discovery in 2007 is quite an interesting one to learn about. She was first encountered by a Siberian reindeer herder named Yuri Kudi, who saw Luba as she appeared out of the melting permafrost. Kudi recognised the remains as a mammoth, and so he contacted a local museum director, asking what he should do. The director arranged for Kudi and his friend to return to Luba with several scientists in order to recover the specimen, but when they got there, the mammoth's body was gone. The team suspected that the body had likely been taken by someone seeking to make a profit from her sale, and so they went out in search of the missing mammoth. Kudi and his friend eventually managed to locate Luba in a nearby town called Novi Port. The mammoth carcass was apparently propped up outside a store where she was going to be sold. The owner of the store had actually purchased the mammoth from Kudi's cousin, who had found her in the original location. Luckily, Kudi, with the help of local police, managed to transport Luba to a museum where she could be studied. Sadly, however, when Luba had been outside the shop, a dog had chewed off much of her tail and one of her ears. If it weren't for this, she would have been almost complete in her preservation. In gratitude of Kudi's help in locating the mammoth, she was named Luba after Kudi's wife, which means love in Russian. Since her discovery, Luba has travelled to several museums all over the world, including the London Natural History Museum and the Sydney Museum, even though the museum in Russia that houses her has concerns over letting her out due to controversies about who actually owns the mammoth. Nevertheless, Luba is a truly remarkable creature that, like the other creatures on this list, owes its incredible contribution to science and our understanding of this ancient species to the ice that encased her for 42,000 years. The final entry on this list is probably the most well-known of all bodies to be found preserved in ice. Utsi the Iceman, also occasionally called the Similaun Man, is the oldest natural human mummy to have been found in Europe, dating to around 5,300 years old. The body was first discovered in 1991 by two German tourists as they were hiking around the Utsul Alps on the Italian-Austrian border. Initially thought to be the body of a modern human, Utsi was taken to Innsbruck, a city in Austria, where it was discovered that the corpse was in fact much older than first thought. As it turned out, Utsi had actually been recovered in Italian territory, and so the body is now on display at the South Tyrol Museum of Archaeology in Italy. The mummy has been extensively studied over the years, and has revealed a great deal about the life and death of this ancient man. A few years ago, researchers were able to reconstruct the face of Utsi, revealing him to have looked like this. Although he looks quite old, Utsi was only about 45 years old when he died. He lived at a time known as the Copper Age, making him older than even the pyramids in Egypt. Several of Utsi's belongings were actually found alongside his body, including a copper axe, which would have been very valuable in his time since the processing of metals had only just started in Europe. Remarkably, this mummy actually preserved red blood cells, which is very unusual since they normally degrade fairly quickly. This is truly a testament to Utzi's incredible preservation in his tomb of ice. This level of preservation has also allowed his DNA to be sequenced, which revealed a lot of information about the man. Utzi would have had brown-coloured eyes when he was alive, and he was apparently lactose intolerant. Researchers were able to discover his blood type, which was O, and that he was likely to have developed heart disease if he had lived longer. There are also apparently at least 19 genetic relatives of Utsi still currently living in areas near where he was found. So who exactly was the Iceman, and what did he do for a living all those thousands of years ago? By looking at the isotopic content of Utsi's bones and teeth, researchers have been able to pinpoint the likely location of his birth, which turned out to be in an area containing several valleys just south of the Alps in Italian territory. 
However, it seems as though Utsi likely travelled to nearby areas as an adult, although he apparently never went further than a 40 mile range around where his final resting place was. This evidence provides some interesting clues as to what his occupation was. It is clear that Utsi spent a couple of months per year high up in the mountains, and there are two ideas as to what this could mean. Firstly, it could have been that Utsi was a shepherd and farmer, travelling up into the mountains for some time in the summer to graze livestock. Farmed grains have also been discovered with his body, further supporting the idea that he was a farmer. On the other hand, Utsi may have been an alpine hunter, living at home in a valley and then travelling up into the mountains to go hunting, which is also supported by the evidence provided by his body. So what actually caused the death of this man? Through examination of his body, a lot of information has been revealed about what occurred in the moments leading up to Utsi's death. In 2001, it was discovered that the body contained an arrowhead lodged in one of the shoulders, and a tear on his clothing seemed to correlate with it entering his body shortly before death. More recent DNA analyses have apparently revealed that there is blood from at least four other people present on his clothing and weapons. There's blood from two different people on one of the arrowheads Utsi was carrying with him, as well as blood from someone else on his knife, and blood from yet another individual on his coat. Researchers have suggested an account of what went down 5,300 years ago that led to Utsi's death, as well as the presence of so much blood. Utsi may have been out hunting, accompanied by one or two other people, when they were attacked by a rival group. From the blood on Utsi's arrowhead, it seems as though he was able to kill two of his enemies, retrieving the arrow both times. Perhaps he also killed someone else with his knife, which could explain the blood on that as well. However, Utsi was gravely injured, and so were his friends. It is possible that Utsi carried a wounded ally on his back as they attempted to make their escape, and this would explain the blood on his coat, or maybe he was the one being carried. But whatever happened, Utsi obviously did not make it out alive. He was shot in the back by an arrow, a fatal blow to the man. It seems as though one of his friends broke off the shaft, perhaps in an attempt to save his life, leaving just the arrowhead in Utsi's shoulder. However, Utsi had also suffered numerous other injuries, including trauma to the head and cuts and bruising on his hands and chest. These injuries do not show signs of healing, indicating that he died not long after they were inflicted. Utsi could not go on for much longer, so he placed his belongings in a neat pile against a rock, before lying down and succumbing to the blood loss inflicted by the arrow. But that was not the end of his story. Preserved for over 5,000 years, he was discovered again, and now, thanks to the ice that froze him in time, we can learn so much about who Utsi was. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you would like to find out more about our universe and the wonderful life we share it with, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more of this sort of stuff.